Kia ora, ngā mihi o te tauhau. Welcome to our new season of Sunday. I'm Miriam Makamal. A freak. That's what Carlos Askew has been labelled all of his life. He's been shunned, bullied and laughed at. But look beyond his damaged face and you'll discover a brave young man who's been given a chance of radical surgery to transform his life. Now, just to survive, Carlos often lives in a world of make-believe, imagining he's a superhero. This from Janet McIntyre. All his young life, he's wanted to fit in. He just never could. I used to feed off of people hating on me and bullying me. His face disfigured, he's taken refuge in fantasy, dreaming he's one of his Star Wars idols. I'd almost embrace it, you know, as a superhero or, you know, some kind of an alter ego. So then people would go, hey, it's him, you know, and I'd be like, hey, and, you know, it was almost like the limelight for me and I felt like I was accepted and a part of something. How are you feeling inside? I wasn't stupid. I knew, obviously, they were laughing at me, not with me. But now, pioneering surgery, one of the first operations of its kind in the world, has given Carlos Askew the chance of a normal life, a normal face. Let me see. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Neither <laughs> can I. We first met Carlos at home in Havelock North a month before his surgery. A lot of people would call me names and... What did they call you? Well, one of them actually called me um, Shovel Face. I laugh at it now. But you know, um, then I was hit on the right side with a shovel and that's why it's flat. So as, as hurting as that was to hear such of a thing, I'd call myself that at school and I felt almost wanted or needed or embraced, even if it was so negative and negative attention and bullying and name calling, I just embraced it. Any attention was better than no attention? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Any, t any attention was better than no attention. What did you know about this little boy? Um, that he was seven and he'd been in a couple of homes. We were his seventh home. We weren't actually told a lot of his medical issues right off the beginning. We, we were told that he was deaf in one ear, half deaf in the other, um, and that he had facial palsy. Nadia and Grant Askew, after trying unsuccessfully to conceive a child of their own, decided to take Carlos as their foster son. His biological mother used drugs while pregnant, and Carlos, born disfigured, was placed in state care, shunted from family to family, mentally and physically abused, until he arrived on the Askew's doorstep. He had these black boots on and shorts that were far too big on him, and a bowl cut, and he looked so funny, and he walked up and he had this cutest grin. I had nothing but a garbage bag full of teddies, the clothes on my back. I walked into a stranger's house and I knew that was that. I knew that I had everything I needed right there. His dad-to-be, working on a building site that day, couldn't wait to meet his new boy. Yeah. I was anxious at work. The guys kicked me out. Go home, you're hopeless to us. <laughs> wanting to go home to see him. Yeah. So, and they just said, yeah, you're useless. Go home. And so he, we know. Yeah. <laughs> what did you make of him? Uh, you just a cute little rat bag, really. But the Askews soon learned life with Carlos wasn't going to be easy. Not only was he disfigured, partially deaf and struggling to eat and speak, Carlos could be a nightmare. Very damaged. I don't think he really knew how damaged he was until he got older. Um, took us a long, long time to get through a lot of this. It was really hard, um, the abuse and the damage that we would go through, curtains ripped off the rails, TV cabinets smashed to bits, um, bench tops, knife cuts through them, um, all because he'd get angry or, or really upset with me. The amount of times I've chivered them through the mud and treated them horribly and took my frustrations out on them purely because of what I had been through, which was no fault of theirs and no fault of my own. The first couple of years were the years where we could have literally turned around and said, no, just 
too, too hard. Yeah. Why didn't you do that? I couldn't. And I still don't know if I could this, to this day, but I know, um, I don't know, it's, he's, he's ours. That's our boy. Wouldn't trade him for anyone. They have forgiven, not forgotten, they've forgiven, and they have still named me their son, and they have said, look, we'll get through this. They've wanted to hit me a few times, but you know what? They've, they've done it, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, they've done the best job ever, and they've done a damn good job mm. to look after me and raise me into the person I was today. Mm. Carlos, the Askew's adopted child, was the centre of their world. They did everything together, until... Don't know what happened. Yeah, <laughs> it just well, happened. It was, yeah, quite. We'd been, yeah. you know, unprotected sex for 16, 17 years, and it never happened. So we just took it that either I was blank or she was not producing. <laughs> and Nadia was pregnant. Carlos was to get her little sister, Olivia. Over the years, I developed a jealousy purely because she had what I didn't. She, she had the first seven years of her life as a normal life. She wasn't moving house to house like I was. And so I was very jealous of that and it took me a long time to adapt and I'm still adapting to it. I mean, there's some times where I think, wow, I wish that was me, you know, I wish I had that, but you can't change the past. How do you feel about the fact that your parents adopted Carlos before you came along? I just feel like he's a normal brother to me. Are you glad that they did? Yeah. Why? Because I'm not lonely <laughs> and I've got someone to play with. Is he a good big brother? Yeah. Even though he can be a little bit naughty at times? <laughs> yeah. You'd still rather have him than not have him? Yeah. Now 21, Carlos wants the same as most young men his age, friends, a job, someone special in his life. But his biggest obstacle is his face. I never had the guts to ask anyone out and I didn't think they'd say yes. That's the image I had in my head, why would you, you know? This is what I look like, why would you? So yeah, that's probably one of my biggest regrets. Have you ever had a relationship? No, I've never had a relationship. and. I've lied a lot about that, even to this day, to a lot of people that are close to me. Um, I've lied to fit in, and I've never had a relationship, never had a girl, <laughs> never been kissed, never had sex, and yeah, I've had a lot of bullying about that, and even to this day, about being a virgin, and you know, and just stupid stuff like that. It takes courage to be so open about things most of us would never reveal, including the name of the girl he wished he'd asked to his school ball. Her name was Olivia. God, she's gorgeous. She still is to this day. <laughs> but yeah. Hello, Olivia. I know. Hi. How are you? It's me. <laughs> In your darkest moments, how bad have you felt about yourself? I've felt very, very emotional and very worthless and to the point where I wanted to kill myself, mm. quite bluntly. I didn't see any other option. I didn't see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. I didn't see happiness around the corner. Coming up, the turning point. A surgical first in New Zealand that could change Carlos's life. All he really wants to do is look as normal as he possibly can. <laughs> so um, the surgery uh, is quite emotive and you know, we, we do change people's lives quite significantly. Life's not easy and we'll all have our struggles but we'll all get there. So yeah, just go hard. Have a smile on your face and it'll all be sweet. <laughs> Set too tight. Alrighty. More than anything, Carlos wants to be a qualified hairdresser. He's got the pattern. All right, good as gold. He wants to make others look good. Clients are putting an awful lot of trust in you, aren't they? They are. They certainly are. And to be honest, I think that's a good thing, really, because I mean, 
I, I feel like I work good under pressure. And he likes to look good himself. Confident, stylish, different. What's with the shorts? I don't know. I th well, the thing is, I think I've got nice legs. So I like the fact that it's a nice dress shirt, potentially a cardigan or a coat or something like that, and shorts. I'm not a sheep in a way, you know, I'm not following the rest of the pack, I'm doing my own thing. Mm. I'm standing out as an individual and I love it. But in just a few weeks, Carlos Askew will undergo the makeover of his life. <laughs> he and his family hope his disfigured face will be transformed by surgery. Yeah, I can't wait. As scary as it is, I can't wait. It'll be good. It's going to change my life forever. What do you think you're going to look like? Oh, more gorgeous than I do now. <laughs> so I, I just can't wait. I don't know that it will have the complete effect that he wants it to have or that he's expecting. I think he thinks he's going to wake up and he's going to be like everybody else. Still not going to change the inner person. It's just going to change the outer. Yeah but I'm happy that it's happening for him. Carlos was born with a condition called hemifacial microsomia. When Carlos was a baby, uh, maybe at around four weeks old, inside his mum's uterus, an artery that helps form the right side of his face didn't work as well, whether the arteries exploded or just is not functioning so well. Um, but all the structures that developed relating to that artery it just didn't really happen. And this is the really cool thing about this. This is the future position of your new jaw. So this is Derek Goodison, an internationally recognised head and neck surgeon based in Hawke's Bay, will perform Carlos's surgery. We separate the whole top jaw and move it to a new position. And we separate and we make bone cuts in the lower jaw and shift that to meet the top jaw. You're going to break his face? Yeah. Brutal. Then Dr. Goodison will take 3D computer generated titanium parts made to measure for Carlos in Belgium and in a New Zealand first, insert them into Carlos's right cheek and jaw. The new parts will mirror the bones on the other side of his face. So is he going to end up with pretty much a symmetrical face after this? That, that was the instructions to the engineer and we've revisited it at least half a dozen times making sure that what we're hoping was going to happen is likely to happen. So you're kind of like the mechanic? I am the mechanic. That is all I am in this whole procedure. I'm the guy who, who lifts up the hood so that we can get the stuff in. But the overhaul is expensive. The titanium implants alone cost $60,000. And the whole procedure at Hawke's Bay Hospital is publicly funded. But Carlos's surgeon says it's worth every cent. I would challenge anyone to deprive a young man of his future. All he really wants to do is look as normal as he possibly can. <laughs> so, um, so it's quite, it's, you know, the, the surgery uh, is quite emotive and, you know, we, we do change people's lives quite significantly. It's been five years getting to this point. Now, this is the first operation of its kind in New Zealand. This specialist team will work on Carlos for the next nine hours. And when he leaves this theatre, he'll have a brand new face. This is our spare part, and that's for his cheekbone. This is a, a really finely latticed titanium piece. And so his bone is going to grow into that. It'd certainly be a win for us if you've got bone growing throughout the whole implant. Almost the entire operation is done from the inside. Carlos's new cheek implant goes in through his mouth. It's hugging, absolutely perfectly hugging the cheekbone. Our little screw holes are going to line up here absolutely perfectly. Nine hours of sawing, cutting, suturing, reshaping would take its toll. Carlos, in the weeks after, felt he was going backwards. He wanted to hide. When you hit rock bottom, there's nowhere to go but up. Generally, I keep going down. <laughs> but then I got quite angry at myself. Then I thought, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it. Nothing's going to stop me. And I'm going to do the best that I can and make the best of my life while I've got it. Wow. It's great, isn't it? It's amazing. Ooh. I can't believe it. Neither can I. <laughs> <gasps> Look at you. Good, isn't it? It's good. good. It's very, very yeah. good. There are still adjustments to be made. 
the elastic bands helping to align his jaws will eventually come off. He may need a few more surgical tweaks. 2018 is a new year. It's a new me, obviously. Anything's possible. And I'm definitely going to put myself out there and see what happens. Well, Carlos has just started a barbering apprenticeship at Hastings Salon here to go. And Carlos, we wish you all the best.